Okay, welcome back everyone from theCUBE's coverage of AWS ReMars here in Las Vegas. Back in person, I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. ReMars stands for Machine Learning, Automation, Robotics, and Space. And we're covering all the action two days, day two. And we're here with Regina Manfredi, who's the VP of Global CSPs, Cloud Service Providers, Alliances for Teradata, great to see you. Cloud Service Providers are Cloud, cloud, cloud services, services providers, providers, the hyperscalers. CSP, hyperscalers, the big guys. All the CapEx, Amazon, yes. the big guys. Indeed, thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for coming on. So tell about your role. So Alliances, you're here with AWS. What's the role with AWS and Teradata? So AWS and Teradata have recently um, entered into a strategic collaboration agreement where we're really focused on building solutions together, um, leveraging AWS services as well as Teradata's outstanding architecture as it relates to the data analytics platform that we provide for our customers in the cloud today. And we're really trying to drive better outcomes for data scientists, business analysts, et cetera. You know, I just recently did a CUBE conversation with Teradata and I was really surprised to find, uh, not shocked, but kind of surprised, the scale of the, the, the computation that's going on in some of the, the cloud things you're doing, mm -hmm. and you have the legacy on-premises data warehouse traditional business as well, we and there's a huge shift going on. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the kind of upstarts, oh, data warehouse, old school, data warehouse, it's antiquated, old, but that's not true. You guys have a lot of cloud action. We do, we have substantial cloud action that's occurring with our customers today. We actually just uh, released earlier this year an announcement around a thousand node test in the cloud together with AWS and um, had success, no downtime, no failures at all, and so we're pretty proud about that yeah. and excited about what that's going to hold for our customers who need that level of scale. Well, Regina, I got to tell you, I'm a little bit of a confession here. I'm a cloud ne uh, data nerd by my training, and you know, I've always watched all the different kind of levels of transformation with the industry, and mm -hmm. you know, this is going to change that, that's going to kill that. Everything's going to be killed, and then it never dies, but it just changes. <laughs> Even today, SQL, is still like the prominent language is mm -hmm. never going. In fact, it's amplified further because that's what people like. So that just proves that things don't always get replaced. And so I wanted to ask you this because as we're here at this event at Remars, you have space, you have all these ambitious, positive goals, and they just need to do some machine learning. They need some cloud, they need, some, they need to have the solutions. Yes. They're not going like, to get in the weeds and say, oh, this is a better Hadoop cluster than this Kubernetes cluster. So it's not about sometimes the tech, it's about the solution. It is, and one of the things that was interesting for us in our session earlier this week was the fact that we had so many uh, customers approach us after that session and say, I just need help preparing my data, running my models, training my models and making sure that they run and can be deployed and I, I don't want to move all the, this data all the time and have all this failure rate that I'm experiencing. And so it was very basic requirements and needs as people begin into their journey on AI ML for their, for their business. And um, so it was reaffirming yeah. that we're on the right track and um, driving the right tools for them. I want to get your perspective on what you think about the show, but first I want to ask you since you brought that up, Swami was on stage and he said, you can spend your entire time and your career just trying to figure out what's going on in machine learning, yep. which open source framework is going to be better than the other one. I mean, it's just a lot of work to even figure it out. We just had the Fiddler AI CEO on who worked out all the hyperscalers, say Facebook, Pinterest, you know, real you know, super you know, alpha, alpha geek, if you will. And he was saying, and we were, we were talking about open source is free software. Yep. Integrations are a big mm -hmm. part of mm -hmm. where cloud scale and the value is being captured for uh, companies and people who are doing projects. Integrating some managed services. So this is where I see you guys going right now with, with Teradata, having all these cloud services built on the install base. Right. Which is not, doesn't hurt that at all. It just only helps it as they would migrate to cloud it's integration, so you take a little bit of Amazon here, a little bit of Teradata there. Absolutely. What's your perspective, what's your reaction to that? So, I agree, and we think that's part of our secret sauce. You know, what we want to have is a data analytics platform in the cloud that allows data scientists and architects, et cetera, to bring their own tools. So whatever they're utilizing today, we want them to be able to utilize it in Vantage and make sure that we can A, drive some efficiencies and also some yeah. better, smarter economics um, as it relates to their particular projects. And so I agree with you 100% and would tell you that we 
we view that as somewhat our competitive yeah. advantage. It's not about being all proprietary. We want those integrations, mm -hmm. and we've got dozens of them with AWS. Can and you give an example? Can you give a couple examples of some integrations that highlight that? Sure, so right now we've got an integration with SageMaker today that allows our customers or a data scientist to come in, prepare the data, and actually leverage SageMaker to build and train the models and then deploy very quickly and easily without having to do all the data movement um, within their, in their architecture It's just today. so fascinating. I can't wait to have more conversation with you guys about this because I just think the world's spinning in a direction where with low code, no code, yep. you see um, code companion whisper that they have, code whisper they launched today. They're writing subroutines for machine learning. And so it's just not, not auto-complete, it's subroutines. So you're seeing all these advances on the mm -hmm. technology. So it comes back to the building blocks, the integration. It just seems like it's going to be like a plug and play. That's all we're all, our old words. Mix and match, plug and play, interoperability. We're old words, like in the old days. Now they're becoming more relevant. What's your take on all that? Yeah, I would agree. Um, I don't think that we should be competing against the algorithms and, and, and neither do we. We want to just actually build out the tool sets that drive the enablement based on what a customer's requirements and needs are and based on what the investments that they've already made within their own enterprise. You know, it's interesting about this, Van, I'd love to get your reaction to what Remar means to you because it's machine learning, automation, robotics, and space. Not your typical tech conference. No. Okay, a little bit of a mixed bag there, so to speak. Uh, I love it, I think it's like super alpha geek, very nerdy, super nerds are here. Mm -hmm. um, and the topics kind of reflect uh, the future. For the people that are watching that aren't here, what's your vibe on the show? What's your takeaway? How would you explain what's going on here from a uh, market perspective, from a vibe perspective? What's happening? This is my first Remars, actually, and um, I would have to tell you that I feel like, it just general observation, a, a few things. One, the conversations are more meaningful and we're getting into the meat of what a data scientist truly needs in order to be successful in their role and help drive their enterprise. That's number one. So I, I think you're, to, to your point, we're all kind of geeking out together yeah. here. Yeah. Um, the other th thing that I think is pretty exciting is the amount of uh, use cases and ways in which we are yeah. imp driving impact, AWS and, and Teradata driving impact for the business analysts yeah. in uh, the enterprise environment, but also for the people, their customers. Uh, that's pretty exciting to see. You know, it's interesting. I first, when I first was kind of like thinking about the show and what I was going to expect, it kind of over exceeded my expectations in the sense of it, it, what I was thinking about IoT, industrial, mm -hmm. in, uh, digital innovation, because uh, that's going to scale. I think now we're at a tipping point with machine learning that the industrial IoT market's just going to explode because mm -hmm. uh, machine learning's ready. But there was a whole positive save the earth angle yes. that caught my attention. Yes. You know, the discoveries from space are going to potentially have impact for the good, not just a cliche, right. some sustainability messaging, it was actually real. Right, I, I think that that's exciting and an area in which we're excited to explore. We're doing a lot of work behind the scenes around sustainability and ESG initiatives for our customers, mm -hmm. but also for the greater good. It's about yeah. driving outcomes for the greater good and being responsible with how we approach that. You know, the other thing I noticed too, from a robotics standpoint, given I live in California, there's a huge robotics culture there, you know. They yes. have, it's like bigger than football and baseball, some of the sports. They have robotics A and B team, and people get cut from the B team. There's so much demand to be on the robotics team. It's not a club, it's a team. Right. And so, you look at what's going on in robotics, it's so exciting in the sense that if you're young and you're into tech, mm -hmm. This is this like, is a place I mean, to be. why wouldn't you be hanging out here? <laughs> well, and I visited the booth over at University of Michigan and how they're driving robotics to help support the human body to go further distances and to drive um, uh, better performance and health for individuals and was really impressed with the work that they're doing and even saw a use case and a need where I thought, you know, I have a quadriplegic sister-in-law who I thought, wow, someday maybe she'll be upright and walking again. Yeah. And, and those were exciting um, conversations to have while I was here. The advances on the material management robots, I think is fascinating um, yeah. to see that growth. Well, let's get back to Teradata real quick to kind of close out um, future of what's next. 
obviously a lot of migration to the cloud happening. Mm -hmm. What's the outlook on the landscape and where do you see it evolving? Because you're seeing what the hyperscalers are doing, the cloud service providers, they're providing the CapEx. In mm -hmm. fact, we coined the term super cloud, last reInvent that's, that's become a thing. And our, our Charles Fitzgerald would think it's not a thing, he debates us online all the time on Twitter, but it's a, you can build on top of a CapEx. Yep. They did all the heavy lifting. You know, Snowflake, Databricks, the list goes on and on. So building on top of that to build proprietary advantages or even just sustainable advantages mm -hmm. is now easy to, easier to do. So super clouds are kind of in play. So that means whoever's got the playbook can win. So you guys seem to be executing that playbook of having the install base and then working with AWS yes. to ride that wave. Tell us about the migration strategies you're seeing and what are your customers doing specifically and take us through a customer that's leaning into the cloud and driving. So when, when I think about specific customers that are, that are leaning in, uh, you know, the first and form, the most important thing that we're hearing is uh, you've got to be able to scale. I've got a, a thousand nodes yeah. or a hundred yeah. nodes or whatnot. And so we're addressing that because we think that there's a place for hybrid cloud. We think yeah. everyone's moving and rushing towards the cloud, but even one of our competitors last week announced that there's a place for on-prem, <laughs> and we, we would agree. Yeah. So um, that is something that we're really focused on, and you take, for example, uh, the automotive industry, we're seeing a lot of work being done together yeah. with our co joint customers, AWS and Teradata, and some of these auto, auto manufacturers who are experiencing yeah. supply chain issues and challenges today, and also need to drive better quality control measures within their own uh, lines and the manufacturing lines and so we're working together with them to look at what type of um, machine learning and AI can we be leveraging together as part of the overall solution to drive those analytics yeah. and make sure that they have better uh, quality control. You know, that's really good insight about the um, on-premise thing and I think that supports what we're seeing around hybrid. Mm -hmm. We see hybrid as a steady state going forward. Period. Yeah. yeah. And, and that will evolve into multi thing, multi cloud, you want to call it, or super clouds and, and more things. Basically, distributed computing. So, if you look at the edge here, the edge is just on premise. What is the premise? It's an edge or mm -hmm. a big device, small device. A data center is a large edge. Right. And so, if you're using cloud hybrid, the distinction kind of goes away. And I think this is where we'll, we're going to see the winners emerge in data. Because remember, you go back to 2010, Hadoop was the big thing big data, and that kind of crashed and burned, and then now you're seeing Databricks pick up a lot of that, Snowflake, you guys are there. And so, it's still going on, this transformation in, in data. Is. And I think hybrid's a huge deal. Um, what are customers saying around that? Because I think they're just trying to figure out cloud scale. I think they're trying to figure out cloud scale. I think they're also trying to figure out security. And so, you know, when we're talking to our customers, that absolutely is critical. Yeah. Um, and, and I would also suggest that the customer base is, is really looking for, hey, don't just help me migrate, I really need to modernize. And so driving the right use cases mm -hmm. for the customer is, yeah. is important. You know, another thing that you guys have a lot of core expertise in is uh, governance. And we've seen how that has played in all the compliance and, mm -hmm. um, and we just, all these conversations are kind of converging. Do you have closed? Do you have open? Machine learning needs more data. Mm -hmm. How do you protect it? So that's a, a hot area that I see as well. Um, and that, that's something that's emerging. Because cyber is also involved too. Like you have, yep. you have cyber security threats on code. So I'm, I'm curious to see how that turns out. What's your perspective on, what's Teradata's perspective on the security open, closed um, perspective? Any, any? It, it's a priority for, security is a priority for us and I don't think that we've officially made that determination yet, right? We're still exploring and we're going to do whatever our customers require of us. In terms of an open, closed, um, perspective, I think we want to be flexible. Again, like I said before, yeah. it's about being open and uh, supportive of whatever the customer requirement great. is, especially across the different industries. Well, Regina, great to have you on theCUBE. Thanks for coming, I really appreciate it. Great insight, great to catch up on Teradata, cloud play, uh, very strong move, I, I think it's a good one. Final question I want to ask you though is, is a little bit more about the personnel in the industry. Like, Obviously, if you're young, you're seeing all this space here. Machine learning is not obvious. I know schools now are, 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 are training it, mm -hmm. but you start to see new personas come into the workforce. Um, where are the gaps? I mean, obviously we have a lot of new opportunities, like cybersecurity is a lot of job openings. Mm -hmm. Is there any observations that you have around, or advice to younger folks coming in 
from a career standpoint? Because a lot of job openings are skills that weren't even taught in school. Right. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <You know? laughs> and then you got the women in tech and you have all kinds of opportunities now that aren't just engineering, right? It's yes. not just engineering, it's computer science. So there's a, there's a whole in-migration of new talent coming in the industry. Yes, I think maintaining a curious mind is really critical and um, taking time to invest in learning. You know, there are so many resources available to us at our disposal that, that don't cost us a dime. And so my advice to anybody who is curious, remain curious, yeah. dig in, and get some experience, and don't be afraid to stick your neck out and try yeah. it. Well, in this conversation, they have robots welcome, you know, in the, out there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Regina, thanks for coming on, we really appreciate John, it. John, thank you, right. it was a pleasure. Cube coverage here in Las Vegas for Amazon ReMars. I'm John Furrier, your host of Stay with more live coverage after this short break.